Come to Lethbridge and join an innovative community for entrepreneurs. With more than a quarter of the 100,000 population under the age of 34, Lethbridge brims with energy. We'll help you to kickstart, innovate, and grow. Lethbridge, Southern Alberta's hub for innovation and technology. It's the bright choice for business builders. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge. Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. An invasion of armies can be resisted, but not an idea whose time has come. This quote by Victor Hugo, along with the line, better tomorrow than today, sets the scene for today's podcast and the vision for the Zingerman's community of businesses. A little bit of a context in my quest to discover insights and provide some compelling solutions for food security through food hubs, I was actually quite dismayed that I couldn't easily find cases to report on. And then I started wondering what was currently happening with Zingerlands, one of the most compelling food-related business stories I've ever experienced. And I discovered Canadian Amy Emberling is amongst the managing owners. So Amy and I are joint coming together today talking about how this radical community food business shares their million dollar secret on how to supersize your impact. This is Angela Fay of Canada's podcast and founder of Futureville, building and showcasing properties, places, and village centers that are future. So first of all, welcome Amy to Canada's podcast. Hi, Amy. <laughs> tell, me, tell me a little bit about your Canadian roots. Well, I grew up on Cape Breton Island. Have you ever been to Cape Breton? I have. And it's funny because my mom grew up in Amherst. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I've got some maritime roots myself. <laughs> oh, well, great. Well, so I grew up on Cape Breton. My father's from Cape Breton and I um, lived there until I was 18. And then I left to go to college. But my brother still lives there and my parents live in Halifax. Um, so I'm. I'm definitely Canadian. I still get teased about my accent. So I think that that is proof that I have Canadian roots. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and uh, we are talking today again, there, and there's a reason why I say this radical community of food businesses. It, it, you're in the business of, of food, but tell me a little bit about how food came to be a mainstay in, in what you do and what value you provide in the world. Yeah, you know, it's really funny, sometimes I, I wish that my calling had been to be a hedge fund manager, but it wasn't. I mean, I wonder, I just wish, like, why did that happen to me? But I have just always loved food. And I did some really strange things when I was a kid, because when I was a kid, I'll let you know, we didn't have even microwaves until I was about 12. So I, when I was little, I found, way, I used to melt candy bars, arrow bars, that proves that I'm Canadian underneath the refrigerator like how i figured that out i don't really know i melted ice cream on our heater vents because i thought it was better warm than cold so i was always into food and uh i would make desserts my family nickname was baker woman and after school i watched the galloping gourmet another proof of my canadian uh citizenship uh, and then, uh, so after I went to college, I honestly spent more time in restaurants than I did in the library. My parents may not have been thrilled, but I had a good time. And then when I was done, I moved to Ann Arbor, where Zingerman's is, uh, with my boyfriend at the time, who has become my husband. And I thought, I don't want to go to school. I am just so tired of school. I want to get a job in a restaurant. And that was sort of the end for me. And I decided that I you know, would have a, a job in the hospitality field. So I have a deep calling and interest in food, um, awesome. but, I, but I also grew up in a family business. And so I really also love business. So, well, and that is a perfect segue to uh, sharing the first million dollar secret, uh, secret to uh, supersize your impact. So first of all, you, you, the person and your purpose is really the number one asset to leverage to spend 90% of your time doing what you love and what you're good at and creating a supersized business. Um, part of what I love about the Zingerman story goes back to the founders, Ari and Paul, who were convinced that focusing on what they loved and are good at, and of course, everybody needs, which is food, in a community that they love 
was more in line with their vision than scaling and maybe homogenizing the deli, taking it to multiple cities, you know, AKA the McDonald's or the McDonald's of Subway, you know, they were a deli. So I guess my question for you is how do you leverage what you do, your purpose, your passion to contribute in a business? Hmm. Well, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that I'm in the right spot for me. And, and I'm so excited about it that every day when I get up, I truly want to come into work and continue to do the work that I love to do. And because I have all of that energy, I have a lot to give to the other people that I'm working with. Awesome. Uh, I, I don't know how else to say it, but if you can find the spot that really fits with your particular passion, I think it's uh, not possible not to leverage your energy. And I think that's a great uh, sort of, you know, energetically contributing, not just to yourself, but to your clients, your community. Um, one thing I want to talk a little bit about uh, Zingerman's is, and what makes it unique is you worked there as an employee but then you became a real owner. Right, right. So let me tell you one of the reasons that I'm here. You know, sometimes people say, well, how did you get there? And then I say, you know what? That is a somewhat interesting question, but I think the more interesting question is why am I still here? And one of the reasons that I'm here is because of the business model that we have here at Zoom. So you kind of suggested that we don't uh, replicate. We, we don't, we're not franchising. So let me, do you, do we have time for me to tell you the story? I would okay. love to know. Yeah, this is yeah, okay. Absolutely. So way back in 1982, these two guys, they were in their mid and late twenties. They were kind of a little bit wild. They met in some <laughs> restaurants and they worked together and they had a good time together. And they realized that they had a passion for Jewish deli food. And in Ann Arbor at that time, uh, they both had Jewish heritage and there were no delis. So there was no place for them to go to eat. And their names are Ari and Paul, as you already noted. And they said, hey, let's get together and open up a delicatessen. So they did it. And that, that was 1982. Ten years later, they felt like they had sort of achieved their vision. Not that there wasn't more to do every single day at the deli, of course. You know, the walk-in went down and someone didn't call in and there was a new olive oil to sell. But essentially, the business was established. So they said, well, what are, how are we going to grow? What are we going to do next? And, you know, we have this really fortunate situation here in Ann Arbor where we have this fantastic university where there are 30,000 students every year. And when they graduate, they leave town uh -huh. and then they say, hey, why don't you come and open up a deli in Chicago or in Arkansas or wherever they happen to have moved to? And so Paul and Ari said, maybe we should just replicate and open up delis all over the country. And they thought, you know, is that what I want to do? And sort of getting back to that personal mm -hmm. passion and commitment that you spoke about. And they said, no, that was not what they wanted to do. They didn't want to spend their lives flying around and landing at, you know, store 45, store 47. Right. Now, not to say that that's not a good business model. For the right person, that's a great business right. model. We all know that financially, that can be a fantastic business model. But what they cared about was making unique businesses and great businesses and being connected to a community and providing opportunity for other people. And so they developed what we refer to now in our organization as Vision 2009. And in that vision, they said, let's create a community of businesses, each one being unique, each one with an owner in it, not just a VP or not someone that they went out and hired, but actually someone who came to them and said, I want to do this thing, this food thing. Uh, and let's stay connected to the Ann Arbor community. And so I, um, I had, as I said, I had moved to Ann Arbor. I worked in some local restaurants. I wasn't finding the spot that I really wanted to be in. And then I saw Ari at Zingerman's Delicatessen. And I don't know how I knew that it was Ari, but he's a pretty distinctive looking guy. He's about 6'5", and he's sort of unusual looking. So somehow I knew who he was. And this was before the internet. You know, there were no pictures on Instagram of Ari. I don't know how I knew him. I think back to those times, like, how did we know anything? Um, but I did. So I went up to him and I said, Hey, where should I go and work? I want, I like, I love what you're doing here, but I, I don't really want to make sandwiches. I love them, but I don't want to do that. Where should I go? And he said, Oh, my friend Frank is opening up a bakery. And so I, that was the second, the bakehouse is the second Zingerman's business. And I went and I uh, started to work at the bakery. So I was there for four years and I loved it. But my husband finished graduate school and we left town. 
And so I left for four years. And then as I, when I was away, I kind of realized what they were trying to do here and what a novel, mm -hmm. radical place, as you suggested, and how it was a place where individuals, they really wanted you to say, what is your vision? What do you want to achieve? And come back and we'll help you make it happen. So uh, that's why I'm here, because it really supports people's personal development. We really care about great service to each other, to the community, to our customers, and we get to make really, really great food. So doing all those things together is sort of why I'm here. And that model of these unique businesses buying and selling between each other, but also cooperating, I think is is really, um, it's really creative, it's fascinating, and it allows us to do some unusual things. And I think you touched on some key themes, right? Which is uh, personal creativity, having the freedom to actually uh, create your own thing within the ecosystem is so critical. And what to me stands out for the Zingerman story. Um, and, and you say, and also the buying and selling, let's just touch on that a little bit. You, you made a great comment earlier, which is you're your own, uh, well, right? We are each other's <laughs> toughest customers, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, because we all know what our, our standards are, our standards of service, our standards of food quality. And so, um, you know, we keep each other on our toes and it's real buying and selling. And you know what? If they if, they, if uh, Zingerman's Deli doesn't like the rye bread that I'm making and they want the, to buy the rye bread from someone else, they can. So right. um, it's a great market opportunity to be connected. And the goal is to try to work together. But if we're not doing our job, then we don't get the business. So it so. keeps you on your toes for Absolutely. sure, raising the bar constantly. I love Absolutely. it. Well, and in all, uh, in all, just to be fully uh, authentic here, when I say it's their million dollar secrets, I mean, at its peak, Zingerman's was at how many million? And before the pandemic, we're at 65 million. So we're about 10 businesses and $65 million. We've dropped a little bit now. I'd say we're in the low 50s, but I, I'm confident that uh, when this is over, we'll rebound back up and hopefully even more. Well, and I want to touch up, we've touched on it a little bit, but honestly, secret number two for 2021 and beyond to future, fastest way to future proof your business portfolio is to stop focusing just on net worth and start focusing on this evolutionary measure of net value, which I term relationship. So I, I just wanna dig a little bit deeper, Amy, if you could on how the Zingerman team really, like the actual functionality, both the mindset and the functionality of how you tap into collaboration, relationships in your community, within your group of business. Can you just elaborate a little bit more for us? Sure. So one of the key things about the whole model is that we are staying in Ann Arbor. So it wasn't just not replicating, but staying in the town. So uh, we, you know, we we have intimate relation, safe but intimate relationship with all the of our customers and lots of nonprofits in the whole community. I mean, we we're constantly involved in each other's work. Now within the organization, you know, we're partners. So I, I mean, we all have separate businesses. And they're not owned uh, by anyone other than the, you know, the founders and maybe a partner in the business, but we still collaborate and act as if we're partners. So every two weeks, all the partners of all the businesses get together and we have meetings and sort of make big picture decisions for the entire organization. So there's a lot of collaboration and creative, creative work that happens there. Well, you know, one thing that this um, pandemic showed that is it's just been invaluable to have sort of the diversity of businesses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. organizations it really made us much more resilient because some of us are doing really really well right now we have an online mail order business as we all know that's the business to be in these Absolutely. days and so they are helping those of us who are artists and producers sort of the wholesalers because they're buying a lot of our product and then we have some restaurants that are not doing so well but thankfully those of us who are doing well we can be there to kind of support the rest of the organization, both financially uh, and by just sort of emotionally being available to the other partners. So having those cooperative relationships is has been essential in the last year. And so really collaboration is key. Um, I, and you skip you you touched on it, but I want to go back to it because I, I think this is uh, something that 
is easy to skip by, but you mentioned the nonprofit is, and I'm sure I've seen somewhere in the Zingerman story that you contribute an X amount of, of food products to, you know, outside of your business. Right. Well, actually, we, we have agreed as partners that everybody contributes 10% of their net operating profit in donations every year. Okay. Okay. And it's a combination of cash and food. Because, of course, some people really want food. You know, they're having a lot of meetings or big events or fundraisers, or fundraisers and they want to have food. So we send food. But some people, you know, they need cash to run their organizations. Not everything is about the food, right? So um, we... Uh, we, we also contribute in the form of cash. Now, Zingerman's also started a uh, one of the first uh, food rescue organizations in right. the entire country, and that's called Food Gatherers. So uh, we wanted to find a way to contribute to the community in that respect also. Well, and to me, so it's, can you just expand a little bit on what is Food Gatherers? Well, Food Gatherers um, is an organization that collects food from primarily grocery stores now that they were not going to sell anymore. Mm -hmm. And then they redistribute it to people who are in need in terms of our food insecure. And now it's a, it's a, it's, you know, a much bigger organization than anything we ever imagined and is independent on it on its own and has its own very large budget, you know, lots of grants and government support. Um, and it serves all a large part of Michigan. So it's really a, it's become quite a success. Tech Connect, a center for entrepreneurship and innovation in Lethbridge, has been springboarding entrepreneurs to success for 10 years and counting. Our spirit of innovation is a way of life. We have an incredible environment. Our innovators are not afraid to stand apart because they know that in Lethbridge, we are brighter together. We are Lethbridge. Come and join us. Go to chooselethbridge.ca slash entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge. Million dollar secret number three to supersize your impact is leveraging this one valuable formula can make you the most sought after, and I say real estate in town, which is villages or the evolution of community living. The, the thing that keeps coming up in the Zingerman's story, and, and I guess your part contribution to the Zingerman story is that the ecosystem, the evolution of people living and sharing and cooperating and supporting each other in good times and bad times really, to me, is you're almost like a little village. Absolutely. It's like, it's like a little world. And, you know, when I was in college, I mean, one of the reasons I, I love being a part of this organization is because you do get to, you know, do good things or live with purpose. And, you know, I as I told you, I grew up on Cape Breton Island. As many Canadians probably know, it's not the most prosperous part of Canada, probably mm -hmm. one of the least prosperous parts of Canada. And I knew very well what it was like to live in an economically struggling community. And it's been a very big interest of mine to provide economic development. Uh, my brother actually lives in Cape Breton and does economic development. My sister ended up going to Africa and doing uh, economic development. And so even though I'm in a for-profit business, a lot of what we do is about trying to mm -hmm. provide opportunity for people in our community. So, um, you know, I when I went to college, I studied American social movements. And one of the areas that I studied was sort of utopian uh, early American communities. And I'd have to say that for Zingerman's, it, we re I really reminds me every day of like a little created utopian community because we're trying to create the world that we really that we really well, want to live in and then we're trying to share what we've learned so that if anyone else wants to create their Love own it. community adapt it to their environment their you know core business maybe it's not food who knows what it is that they could possibly do that uh, and i love how you described it as saying you've created your own little utopia, right? Yeah. Food related utopia in this yeah. beautiful community of Ann Arbor. Um, and then you are sharing everything that you've learned and all of your knowledge with the world. So I just want to touch about a little bit about um, can you, uh, the Zingerman's experience, right? It, it is way more than just a loaf of bread and things like that. Can you tell me a little bit about the physical bricks and mortar? properties that are involved in Zingerman's. Does everybody have a physical 
bricks and mortar to walk into and experience? Uh, everybody does. Uh, even our our mail order business, ha, you know, has their own little funny little shop, and they do these warehouse sales. So they do too. So let me describe: these. we're all over Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is a pretty okay. small town. It's about one hundred and fifty thousand people, but it goes down to about one hundred and ten thousand when this university is not in. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what the how many square miles it is, but it's it's not it's you know it's not very big. Uh, however, we're all over the city. So our flagship store is Zingerman's Delicatessen. It was the first one. It's in what's considered the old part of Ann Arbor, which I think is kind of funny because, you know, Ann Arbor is not very old, but whatever. <laughs> uh, and there is a cobble uh, street in front of it. And it's an old grocery store. And it's a really funky, fun building. And if anyone goes online to you know, zingermansdeli.com or zingermans.com, you'll see that we have a really big visual presence. We have a very distinctive look and feel that wasn't developed by an ad agency. It was just developed over time by people who were working in the organization. And now, you know, we do have sort of rules to follow about it, but it was um, created completely organically. So the deli has all of that look and feel and it's kind of tight and cramped and bustling a little bit like a New York place. And then uh, you come to what we now call Zingerman Southside. And Angela, you might not even know about Zingerman Southside, but the, okay. you know, the bakery opened in 1992, and we're in this very nondescript, you know, warehouse kind of district because we're like light manufacturing, and we wanted right. truck stops, and we wanted to be close to the highway. But now Zingerman's Bakehouse is here, Zingerman's Creamery is here, Zingerman's coffee company and roasting company is here, Zingerman's Candy is here, and Zing Train, our company that teaches about our business practices, we're all in this little neighborhood, and it's like this little gem. You wouldn't think that it was there, and all of a sudden, you turn down one of these driveways, and there are all these funky little businesses. So you can come to each of the producers, go into our tiny retail shops, and in each shop, there's a window into our production, so you can see all the food being made. And then if you drive about five minutes away, you get to Zingerman's mail order, which is in another warehouse district. And they have all these kind of, <laughs> they have all these planters outside. It's sort of a, a fun and unusual looking place. You're like, what? who is this that's in these buildings? But they're there and they're an incredible business. And then we can drive 20 minutes out of town. Um, that's the farthest of, that any of our businesses away to Zingerman's Corn Man Farm. And that is a really beautiful uh, wedding and event space on an old oh, farm cool. where it's again, relatively new business. And on the west side of Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor is Zingerman's Roadhouse, which is an all-American sit-down restaurant. Near the deli, there's Miss Camp. I mean, so there are all these little businesses, each that look unique, but have some of the Zingerman's look and feel in them. And then a lot of, you know, people being themselves in service roles. You meet a lot of characters when you come into our shops. You get a sense of the place being kind of connected in the same, but each place also has a slight different kind of feel and culture to it. Very cool. Question about the destination, Ann Arbor, um, and and how Zingerman's, we talked about the physical geography a little bit. How and why do you think Zingerman's becoming an institution there? What was it? You, what was the uniqueness about the geography that that is critical to the business success? You know, we talk about we talk about terroir in wine, and we talk about it here also in and sort of how we became who we are because of where we are. And I think a lot of it has to do with being in a university town with okay. that which has a lot of people coming and going. So a lot of creativity and innovation because of that, and a lot of ideas and conversation, and also a pretty large international community. So people wanting their own, you know, in the food world, wanting their own food, asking for their own food, making their own food and needing those ingredients. So I think all of that together kind of allowed us to be who we are. I mean, I think we're kind of, you know, I wouldn't say nerdy, but slightly intellectual food people in a way, or, you know, really hung up on process and culture and, and the history of the food. We're very wordy. If you look at a lot of our materials, they're long, they're in depth. And I think that's possible because of where we are. And okay. that's, one of the, that's one of the reasons Paul and Ari didn't want to move around, that I don't think that we would be who we are if we were transplanted into another place. We might be something 
just as wonderful as there are incredible right. places as we know all over the world, all over North America, but it would be different. And so they thought, we, we like who we are, let's be who we are in this town. Um, just one other point that I wanna bring up because the our world is uh, sensitive to this now. Another reason we don't kind of want to expand into other areas is that we've talked a lot about it being sort of like colonizing. You know, right. who are we to move into this other community? We don't know that community. And it feels like, you know, for us to come in and tell them what they should eat or how, you know, what kind of business they should be doing with us in their community just doesn't feel right to us. We right. would rather teach people what we're doing if they want to learn it and allow them to kind of develop the sorts of businesses that fit in their world. Well, and that's a perfect segue. I mean, I'm a classic, you know, we wanted to, uh, it, one of our goals today was, you know, infuse a desire to visit Zingerman's. And ironically, or or I guess part of this story is, you know, I've never been to Ann Arbor, but I feel like I'm a Zingerman's champion, right? And it, it came from when I had a guest house and was imagining a similar sort of, you know, uh, you know, community of businesses uh, drawing on a, on a, on a shared cause, right? And really contributing back to community. That's where I found out about Zingerman's, but I've been a Zingerman's champion for a long, long time. And today, and yet I've never been. So I've never experienced the physical bricks and mortar, but I definitely am a champion. And two is, is also, I'm very aware of how you share your knowledge. So mm -hmm. something I want, you know, would, that I'd love to listen, that we would love to partake in is, how can we connect with Zingerman's now when we know that we share a similar vision, we share similar values to you, Amy, and your crew? Is um, What's a good way to connect with you now in this digital world? Well, I got to tell you, if there's any time that it would be easy to connect with us uh, virtually, this is the time because we are all now doing all kinds of the things that we do, but online. So, and Thanks. I think it's really pretty easy. So Zing Train, for all of the business people who are listening to this, if you're interested or you are inspired by what I'm talking about or curious, you can go to zingtrain.com and you see that they have all these seminars and they are short ones and long ones uh, that you can participate in. And we just share what we do in the hopes that if there's something that sounds appealing to you, you can adapt it and use it. Or if you want to enjoy our um, our food or learn about you know how to cook some of what we're doing at uh, bakewithzing.com, we have about 12 different classes on every single week. Zoom is delicatessen. You can go to their website and you'll see that they're doing tastings. Uh, it's hard to ship food to Canada. They, our companies are shipping food to you know connect <laughs> tastings but I'm not quite sure it will make it. So I'm not sure I'd recommend that. But there, and then I just, one last thing that the, Ari Weinzweig has written many, many books that right. really outline how we do our business. So for some of you who would prefer to read, if you go to Zingerman's Press, you'll see the books that Ari has written. So you are well and truly a, a an ecosystem around, you know, leveraging food as a cause, but at the business of food. And um, I just, one thing I would, I'm curious about just, just, I guess, pragmatically is today with a little bit of drop in, in, you know, we're probably at about 52 million would be the sort of sales of Zingerman's right now. How much of that would be attributed to online? Um, they are estimating to do about $22 million of sales. Wow. So they are. They had been at about seventeen million, and now in their typical annual. So, they they have gone up um, tremendously, and you know they're taking up a lot of the what we're lo we've lost in the restaurants because they can't be open at full capacity. And so, really, a, a takeaway for me is that in order, I mean, you've started pre pre economic crisis of two thousand and eight, pre global pandemic. You demonstrated resiliency through all of that. Uh, ecosystem thinking is definitely a key to, to uh, resiliency in business, but also that going forward to be future-proofed, you need to be online, right? You, and a big chunk of business is likely going to come from of your champions, right? Your advocates, your 
your buyers, your stakeholders, uh, your, maybe your next business owners talking about 2032, you have a plan. Right. right Do you want right. to touch on that just quickly? Well, you know, we, 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 um, we really care about resiliency and we think that diversity is a big part of that. And also, you know, Ann Arbor can only take so many food places. <laughs> And there are many people now who are doing things not related to Zingerman's that are wonderful food um, places. And so we and we have people who are working with us who have other passions that's not about food and they want to open up other kinds of businesses. So we just launched our vision of 2032. And in that, it says that we've expanded into non food businesses. So I don't know what the first one will be, uh, but we will uh, we'll see and uh, it'll be exciting. And so the best way to connect with you is likely, I, I mean, are you ever a teacher yourself on the baking schools? Do you still get to do what you love every day? I do. And sometimes I'm actually also with uh, working with Zing Train. So awesome. are very good. Is there any other uh, way that we can connect with you, Amy, post, post podcast? Sure. I mean, I am happy to uh, communicate with anybody. So you can just email me at a emberling, E-M-B-E-R-L-I-N-G at zingermans.com. Well, from these two maritime in our blood girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom grew up in Amherst, Nova Scotia. So from Am from Nova Scotia roots to, you know, the future of uh, ecosystems in business, I just want to say thank you for joining us on Canada's podcast. Amy, you are so inspiring. Thank you for joining us. I know it's a bit of a stretch being in Ann Arbor, but I love, love that you were able to make time for us. Thank you, Angela. It was really fun. I was thrilled to see, have the invitation. And, you know, Ann Arbor's not very far from Windsor. <laughs> it's so and true. So, it's so true. And what's going on in the United States? Who knows? Maybe Michigan will be part of Canada someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Amy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bold. Vibrant. Technological. In Lethbridge, our spirit of innovation is more than just the way we do business. It's the way we live and the way we succeed. We'll help you to kickstart, innovate, and grow in Lethbridge, Southern Alberta's hub for innovation and technology. It's the bright, affordable choice for business builders. Go to chooselethbridge.ca entrepreneur and we'll help you move and grow in Lethbridge.